I hate bugs, but I love horror movies with bugs, especially when they're huge mutant bugs like the ones in this week's movie, Ticks. Ticks is a 1993 horror film from director Tony Randell. The movie opens in Seth Rogen's house. There's a pot farm that's been mixing steroids into the water to create a larger crop. Who is the mastermind behind all this? Some of the chemical runoff has been leaking into the ground and is causing the ticks to mutate. Is that toxic waste or kale juice? It probably tastes about the same. Over in the city, a guy is dropping his son off to go on a camping trip. Dad, please don't make me do this. Tyler, it's for your own good. Now quit being a baby and go stand under that overpass wearing all camouflage in gang territory. Tyler's going on a camping trip for a few days in the hopes he'll overcome his fear of the woods. While waiting for his ride to arrive, he runs into Panic. Panic tries to intimidate him, but he's already seen Silver Spoons, so he's not scared. Holly and Charles, the heads of the Wilderness Project, show up with Kelly and Charles' daughter, Melissa. Dee Dee and Rome, two stereotypes in a BMW, show up as well. Panic is really friends with Holly, and he joins the group. Is an empty lot under an overpass really the best place to pick up a bunch of kids? What was the other option, out in front of a 42nd Street crack den? The van stops at a market to get some supplies, and Panic digs through everyone's pack. Ah, jackpots. What's that? A big bag of Cialis? Panic's dog has a tick, so Tyler shows him the proper way to kill it. I didn't know ticks were made out of kerosene. Melissa's reading the bulletin board. Mary Juana? What is this town stuck in 1936? Extreme creep Jerry tries to make a move on her, but Sir tells him to leave her alone. That only stops him temporarily. Jarvis is setting up some bear traps around the pot farm. The ticks break out from under the floorboards and kill the hamster. Dude, you're all messed up. That poor little guy only had three days left till retirement. One of the ticks attacks Jarvis and he trips over his own trap. Then the giant mutant tick pods start falling from the ceiling. How much weed was he smoking that he didn't notice these giant pods hanging from the ceiling? The van finally makes it to the campground. Tyler finds a tick pod in the closet in the guy's cabin. Kids are always poking at things. They're handling this pretty well. Mmm, lovely. Bet that's dinner. Here would be my reaction. Seven eighteen ninety three. We have just arrived at the campsite. And already I'm checking out the legs on Mickey Dolenz's daughter. Tyler and Melissa are taking a walk through the woods, which is filled with pulsating tick pods. Don't move. Nice try. There's something on your back. Something on your back is kind of an understatement. Tyler tries to knock it off, but it just bites the stick and runs away. Tyler and Melissa try to tell Charles, but he doesn't believe them. Sir and Jerry show up to effectively creep everyone out. Nothing creepier than an old guy in an ascot who habitually combs his hair. Back at the pot farm, Jarvis wakes up to the ticks burrowing inside of him. That can't possibly feel good. I know he's in a lot of pain, but is shooting yourself really the best idea? The kids start a fire and Charles freaks out. What's going on? Jesus Christ! Are you guys crazy? This area is a fire hazard! Hey, idiot! Maybe you should be spending some time with the kids teaching them about the wilderness instead of leaving them alone while you fuck your girlfriend. One of the ticks attacks Panic's dog. Tyler goes to wake up Charles to get some help. Charles! Oh, Jesus. What now? There's something wrong with Panic's dog! Jesus. If you didn't want to deal with a bunch of kids in the woods, you shouldn't have brought a bunch of kids to the woods. Panic finds his dog Brutus. Panic's upset over Brutus being killed, so he's planning to leave. The next day, there's even more tick pods in the woods. Seriously, fuck these woods. The camp gets a visit from the local sheriff. Tyler goes with Charles to look for Panic and take Brutus to the vet. At the vet, the doc pulls a giant tick out of Brutus's stomach. <laughs> they try to catch it, but it runs all over the place. No, doc. I don't think an aquarium fishnet is going to do the trick. Charles pulls it off Tyler, and the vet steps on it. In the woods, Panic gets attacked by a tick. He rips it off, but the head stays inside of him. Holly's trying to convince the kids to go fishing. Dee Dee, what about you? Oh, I gotta stay in the shade, you know that ozone thing. What? How can you stay in the shade while sunbathing? Am I just not understanding sarcasm? Melissa and Kelly end up going fishing. While on their way to the pond, Kelly opens up to Melissa. After I was raped, I just had nothing to say. This just got all after school special serious all of a sudden. 
The girls think they caught a fish, but instead, it's actually the body of the sheriff. Dee and Rome sneak off into the woods, and Dee stumbles upon Jarvis's barn. Why would you put your face that close to these things? On her way out, she runs into Jarvis. He trips over another bear trap and lands on her. If it wasn't for the bear trap, this probably would have been the best thing that happened to him today. His face explodes and a tick lands on Dee. She gets out from under him and takes off. Jerry and Sir are beating up Panic for being on their pot farm. Brilliant move. Shoot the shotgun around the propane tanks. Panic almost gets away, but Sir shoots him in the back. So all the weed in the farm is now burning. Wonderful. Now half the state is going to get a contact high. On the way back from the vet, Charles picks up Roman D. Charles returns to the camp. With the woods on fire, all the ticks are swarming the cabin. Sir and Jerry are outside, and Charles, being an idiot, lets them in. Panic is somehow still alive, and he makes his way back to the cabin. He starts having a seizure on the floor. I guess you could say he's having a panic attack? He tells the group that Sir shot him before he dies. Sir shoots Charles and takes the keys of the van. Jerry goes out to get the van. Roll up the window, stupid! One of the ticks bites him and he crashes the van into the cabin. Wow, Sir is really durable. He gets hit full steam from the van, smashes through the front of the cabin, and doesn't even have anything broken. Even the cast can't believe it. <laughs> the ticks are now swarming the cabin. The kids subdue Sir and Rome stabs him. What is going on with Panic's body? It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Charles, Holly, and the kids escape upstairs while a super mega ultra tick explodes out of Panic. This is awesome. Even though Panic's dead, he now gets his revenge when the super tick kills Sir. Tyler jumps outside and brings the van to the cabin so they can escape. The giant tick's attacking Rome, but Tyler manages to light it on fire and kill it. They then drive back to the city, all agreeing that nature sucks. In a junkyard, we see the van, and one of the tick pods hatches from it, in the hopes that they'd be able to make a sequel. Unfortunately, they didn't. The movie was filmed mostly in San Bernardino National Forest in Los Angeles, California, in five weeks, for about a million dollars. The scenes with the cabin were shot in Griffith Park, California, and the exterior of the cabin was a facade. The interiors were shot on a soundstage in Los Angeles. Special effects master Doug Beswick came up with the idea for the film. Producer Jack Murphy liked director Tony Randell's work on Children of the Night and Hellraiser 2, so they asked him to direct Ticks. After the film wrapped, they felt it wasn't as fleshed out as it should have been, so months later they added new material. At this point, they wrote additional scenes and brought in Clint Howard as an entirely new character. Since the budget was getting thin, they managed to shoot all his scenes in one day. The movie was originally written as Ticks, but the studio didn't like the name. In the movie, Clint Howard ad-libbed this famous line. I'm in the studio liked that, so they changed the name of the film to Infested for its short theatrical run. When the movie was released on VHS and cable, they changed the name back to Ticks. The scene where Amy Dolenz is looking closely at a tick pod was an homage to Alien. The ticks were done by KNB Effects Group, which now does, amongst other things, the zombie effects for The Walking Dead. The ticks were each modeled to have springy legs, and they were pulled along by monofilament. As they were pulled, the legs moved, giving them the appearance of walking on their own, although some of the more complicated shots were done with stop-motion animation. The giant tick at the end was built on a raised stage, and puppeteers controlled it from underneath. The sheriff was played by Rance Howard, who's the father of both Clint and Ron Howard. Sir was played by Barry Lynch, brother of the outstanding character actor Richard Lynch. Originally, David Gale was cast to play Sir, but unfortunately he died a year before production began. Seth Green was very good as Tyler. He did a lot of TV and movies before, but this was his first lead. Alfonso Ribera played Panic. He's mostly known as Carlton from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He did this while still working on The Fresh Prince in the hopes that when that series ended, he wouldn't be typecast. This movie is a ton of fun. It's a perfect homage to the giant bug films of the 50s. This year, the movie celebrated its 20th anniversary. For a 20-year-old $1 million production, the creature effects are amazing. With the overinflated budgets of today's big creature features, they still can't hold a candle to some wire, syrup, and ingenuity.
Dee, how much this thing cost? Uh, Daddy said the IRS paid for it. Since it was so cheap, I asked the old man to buy me one, too. Only if you drive to Mexico, he says. And stay there! Do I look Mexican to you? Yeah. <laughs>